Ever pinch pennies all year for that one family vacation only to feel the budget blues afterwards? If so, I was just like you. After three vacationless years, I stumbled on credit card rewards travel and cracked the code to amazing vacations that I could actually afford. Welcome to Wonderland on Points. In this podcast, you will discover how opening credit cards strategically can save you thousands on travel. We're not just dreamers anymore. We're two adventurous moms turning dreams into reality. Join us as we spill all the points and miles secrets. And contrary to popular belief, you don't have to spend a million dollars to earn a million points. Traveling on credit card points isn't reserved for those with overflowing bank accounts. It's for everyday people like you and me, learning to turn routine expenses into free travel. Consider us your points travel guides. This is Wonderland on Points. Let the adventure begin. Hi friends, welcome back to the podcast. We have such a treat for you guys today. We have a best-selling author on the show today. We are going to talk to the author of the book, 12 Trips in 12 Months, Jen Ruiz. She is going to tell us all about seeing her book on the airport bookshelves, which is just like mind-blowing to me. Um, She's going to tell us all about her adventures, and we're going to get into that. But first... What should we remind people of, Joanna? Okay, guys, we have said it. We said it on an episode. We said it in our Instagrams. We've said it all over the place. It's in the Facebook. It's on our website. We have a budget challenge. The Facebook? It's in the Facebook. I love how old you sounded just then. I can say that because you're younger than me. It's on the Facebook, guys. Well, I meant like the Facebook group, but now that you say it that way, I realize how that sounded. You the probably Facebook. don't even remember because you're younger than me. It was the Facebook when it originally started, but only OG Facebook people. Because I was in college when Facebook came out and it was called the Facebook, not just okay. Facebook. I do not remember the Facebook, but I do remember when you literally had to have a college email account to get Facebook. Yes. Um, So, you know, I'm not that young. Uh, I still grew up in a house with dial-up internet and no cell phones, okay? I, I... I might have the face of a 12-year-old, but I am, in fact, in my 30s. The face of an angel, baby. (laughs) On the Facebook and in all the other places, you can find out about our budget challenge. And we will have a lot more information coming out about that. But we have a jam-packed month of activities and saving tips and tricks for you guys to try to get a little bit of a travel savings account going for yourselves and to see how you can do with a little bit of accountability when it comes to skipping those impulse spending opportunities. So we're really excited about this. You're going to love it. More to come. Uh, So quick reminder before you give everybody a little card update for the week. And that reminder is you guys... And you have been doing so lovely already with this. Can buy us a coffee. And it has been such a joy and such a delight. And we have already been able to reinvest these coffee purchases back into our little business here that we work so hard on. And we appreciate you guys. So there is a link in the show notes. And you can go there and you can support what we are doing here by buying us a coffee. And realistically, the money could go to anything. Sometimes it will be coffee and caffeine. Other times it will be equipment or continuing education or just helping us make a better podcast to help you. And it means the world to us. And I guess while I'm just pitching all the things, I'll also remind you, go click five stars. Scroll down to the bottom and click five stars. Give us a review. We loved seeing all of your reviews from the last couple of weeks when we were doing that gift card giveaway. It filled our hearts with overflowing amounts of joy. So do that. That is all our housekeeping for today. Sorry, that was a lot. Mary Ellen, update everybody on your American Express Platinum situation. Yes, it is that time of year. The American Express Platinum annual fee has hit our account. And you guys may know that the Amex Platinum is a phenomenal card. 
it has a huge annual fee. It has tons of benefits. If you use all of the benefits, it far outweighs the um, price of the annual fee, but it's a little tedious in earning you know, $200 here, or $400 here on these different credits. And so I messaged them in the Amex chat today. I said, you know what? We are considering canceling this card. It's just too tedious to keep up with all of the coupon book like rewards and benefits that you guys have. But before I cancel, is there a retention offer that you could give me? They said, sure. Well, first they're going to message you and say, do you travel a couple times a year? Did you know you get five times points on travel? And I said, absolutely. I do know that. I also have several other credit cards that get five times points for travel. And I don't need this big annual fee that's hard to use. So you have to message back and forth a little bit. But then they offered me 25,000 points if I were to keep the card and spend $3,000 on the card in the next three Three months, kind of a little mini sign up bonus, mm. but it's nice because you already have the card. There's no hit to your credit. It doesn't take up a 524 spot, but it's a retention offer to keep you in the Amex Platinum family. I, however, rejected the offer because I've seen some data points that there are 50,000 or 55,000 point retention offers out there that are a possibility. The offer tends to change daily. So my plan from here on out is I'm going to try once or twice more to see if I can get a better retention offer. If I cannot, I may end up taking that 25000 if it's offered to me again, or we may actually cancel the card. I've done the math. I've seen what benefits from the card we use. And if you don't remember what benefits there are for this card, highly recommend you go find our whole episode. We did a deep dive on the Amex Platinum with our friend Ryan from Profits and Points. Listen to that episode. You can get a ton of value from this card, but it just takes some work. So I'm still deciding if you are not familiar with retention offers, send us a message, send us an email. We'll love to tell you more about it, but you should absolutely be trying to get retention offers, especially for your Amex cards, because you can typically be successful with it. This is such a great option. And another thing that you shared with me is that for any given day, it sounds like they have a set retention offer. So they told you specifically, this is the offer for today. Feel free to try back again. So that's very interesting. It means that you're really not totally out of luck with that first offer and you can keep trying. So um, I think this is just a really interesting thing to keep in mind, especially with those high annual fee cards where you have to coupon book your way through getting the value. But actually, this is kind of a fun little segue into the budget challenge as well, because in our daily emails, we'll have some moments in there where we remind you, check your credits, check your offers. Maybe you want to splurge or treat yourself today. All right, maybe your American Express card has the ability for you to do that with no money coming out of your budget for this month. So we're going to remind you of all of the ways that points and miles and credit cards intertwine with your daily life and ways that you can increase your travel budget and that line item and that savings account in addition to not feeling like you're depleting yourself and never having any fun and never splurging. We'll give you ideas for free family fun on the weekends and just different things to motivate you. So that was a nice tie into that. If you want to sign up for our October budget challenge, go ahead, go to our website, wonderlandonpoints.com. There's a blog on that website and on the blog, you'll see the sign up for our October budget challenge. So please do sign up. We're going to put you on a special email list apart from our regular email list so that you will get the daily budgeting emails throughout the month of October. Yes. So even if you are already signed up for our newsletter, that does not make you automatically signed up for the budget challenge. So be sure you get on that list. I'm also going to put a link below. And now I think we should let you listen to our interview with the incredible Jen Ruiz. 
Today, we have our friend Jen Ruiz here. Jen is a best-selling author of a travel memoir. She has, these are some fun facts about Jen, very fun facts. She has been on a billboard in Times Square advertising her book. She has done a TED Talk, which is incredible, and she is an attorney turned travel blogger. So Jen, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to love travel and about that career path from attorney to travel blogger. Well, thank you so much for that warm introduction, Mary Ellen. I'm so happy to be here. Uh, it has been a journey, that's for sure. Uh, this all started when I was practicing law. I took a 12 trips and 12 months challenge the year before my 30th birthday. That's the subject of my memoir, and it's by that title, 12 trips and 12 months. Uh, and at the end of that year, I wrote my first book. I had, you know, figured out my first remote work situation. And I decided to take the leap into doing this full time because I knew that I was the least encumbered at that moment, right? Like I didn't have everybody else relying on me. I didn't have pets. I didn't have plants. I didn't have a mortgage. So I could make these big decisions and take these big risks in a way where I felt like I had that safety net and that cushion if I did want to, you know, fall back on law and start practicing again. So but I also knew if I didn't take that risk and, and do it full time, it was going to be really hard to make that into a real career because so much of my time was put into law. And I was just really putting what I had left over at the end of the day into right. these pursuits. So I've been doing this full time now for the last six years. Uh, and I, I love it. I'm the solo female traveler behind Jen on a Jet Plane. And I share a lot about um, arts and culture, uh, women's empowerment throughout the world, uh, little known, you know, U.S. destinations here. So, you know, encouraging people to travel even if they don't have to go far. And that's what I do mm. now. I love that so much. When you set out on this trip challenge, did you know that you were going to write about it? Or did that happen at the end where you were like, this was so incredible, I have to turn it into a book? I didn't know about it. And actually, at the end, I self-published five books before I wrote this book. So wow, because I realized this was the book I wanted to write initially, but people were asking me for a book about the affordable flights and how I was able to take all of those trips on a public service salary, you know, how I was able to find these deals that I didn't realize I had inadvertently been marketing my book just by sharing them, right? So by telling people, mm. I got a $70 round trip flight to Aruba, suddenly everybody wants to know how. And when my book comes out, everybody wants to buy that book. So the book did really well. My first book, The Affordable Flight Guide, it uh, was a bestseller in eight categories on Amazon and it won a Reader's Favorite Award. Um, awesome. Yeah, thank you. And so that encouraged me. I initially was just on the track because there's a statistic that says that you know, a certain percentage of six-figure authors have 20 books or more. And so I just thought, mm -hmm. okay, uh, one down, like 19 to go. <laughs> 19 to go. There we go. And so uh, that's what I was doing in the track that I was pretty steadily on until the pandemic hit. And then I realized that if I did want to try to, you know, tell this story that I had put on the back burner and try to get it published traditionally with the goal of having, you know, this, you know, like, like, like I've had now, I was in the airport bookstores, that would have been near impossible to do as a self published author. Uh, and so yeah. just so many perks of having that and, and, you know, getting a book deal. And so I set out to do that in 2020. And now it's 2024. And my book just launched. <laughs> wow. wow. So that's a long process. And is that pretty typical? I mean, knowing nothing about the publishing world, is that really the journey that most published authors are going on where it takes three to four years? It can vary. So it can be that you are a really popular figure and somebody comes to you with an idea for your book and then they want you to just write that book. I know some people in like the personal finance space that that has, they've been approached for that. Um, mm. Whereas my book was more a concept that I was trying to sell to the publishing companies. And so sometimes when you're on that route, particularly if you're somebody 
less forward. Like I think for me, I've had a fast track because I went to the Writer's Digest conference and I paid extra to go to a pitch slam where I was paired. Oh, what a great idea. Yeah, I just think it takes you out of the realm of anonymity of being in the bulk submission inbox that so many people do with these big agents that you just imagine these agents have, you know, full manuscripts, hundreds of them in their inbox. They don't know you from Adam. And so it's really difficult to stand out in that setting. Whereas when you have eight agents that are scheduled to meet with you that have reviewed your bio that know who you are before they're talking with you and even if they're not interested in your book still still feel like somewhat obligated to give you some value for your time either like a piece of advice or someone they can refer you to like you know they don't just leave you kind of just hanging um and so i think that made a big difference because i know other people that don't feel comfortable in that setting and don't feel comfortable marketing or selling themselves. And so they'll sit there and do the bulk submission for years. And it could be, you know, 10 years before you even have anybody show interest if you persist for that Mm. long, because like your poor soul will be crushed with every rejection. Um, Oh, yes. Yeah. And, And I just, and I don't think it's the authors. I think that with anything in a heavily saturated field, which publishing is, yeah. you need to do whatever possible to stand out. That right. is absolutely fascinating. And it makes me think of wits because as this was my first time at wits, sitting down at those tables with those brands like they have at wits, the first time you do it, is horrifying. Okay. And I'm like, I have this podcast. It's doing very well. Like I had no idea what I was doing. So the idea that you're just like, I'm going to go in, I'm going to take these meetings by the balls. And are we even allowed to say that on this clean podcast? (laughs) It's our podcast. I mean, but we don't have the E for explicit on this podcast. So I don't know if that falls under that or not, but you just like, you just did it. And even if I, I don't know if you were nervous going in, but it just shows how stepping outside of your comfort zone, a little bit can transform your entire life. And I absolutely love this story. Like I actually have goosebumps because it's like so inspiring. Yes. And when I first went to WITS, it was the same for me. It was a little bit nerve wracking. And now with the appointments that I do at these, uh, because I go to so many of these conferences, I do at least like 50 to 100 appointments a year. So if this appointment, easy. if it starts with something where I feel like it's similar to what you've been telling everybody else, like, let's sit down and review the brochure. Let me tell you the catch. I'm like, let me stop you right there. <laughs> we have like eight minutes. So let's get, I have some like actual questions. I understand the brochure. I already did my research. I already know that. Here's what I want to know while I have you here face to face with me. You know, how do you work with bloggers and influencers? Do you have any upcoming trips? What are your upcoming marketing priorities for this year? You know, do you, what is your fiscal year? Do you have any budget left for this fiscal year? Uh, and so these are wow. the questions that I cannot get from a brochure. And that's why I'm here talking to you in person. And so many of these people like waste these 15 minute meetings of just like, oh, you have a food trail? Like, tell me more. Like, please, no. (laughs) I I am realizing now that I wasted all of my time, but it's okay (laughs) because next year, next year, I'll know what to ask now. You've just given me a little window into how to do this. I want to remind our (laughs) listeners who may not remember, we keep saying wits, wits, wits. Um, This is the Women in Travel Summit. So this was the big conference that Joanna went to. And if you're a longtime listener, you've heard us mention it on the podcast, but it has been a while. So any newer listeners, uh, we're referring to the Women in Travel Summit. Yes, that is correct. Thank you for making that point because I'm sure there are some people who are like, what are you talking about? We've just had a lot of guests on that I've connected with at WIT, so I feel like I mention it a lot. But I also feel like I derailed us from the actual topic of this. Tell us a little bit what it was like to see your book on airport bookshop shelves. I mean, I imagine that was such a surreal experience. It really is because shelf space is so, so limited in the bookstore and they want like no returns. And so it's really tough to get in there unless you're a celebrity, a New York Times bestseller, Emily Henry, like you see the same people in the bookstore everywhere you go. And it's like just constant. Like you'll see Matthew Perry's, you know, um, you know, it's just the books that they know are going to sell. And so it's very hard for them. You know, I'm a first time traditionally published author, six time author in general, but 
for them, it's still a risk, to, you know, to put me on the shelves and to see, you know, how I would perform. So initially they said no. And it was because we did such a strong promotion this summer. We had so many accolades, you know, we kept pushing and my publishing company kept sending that to them and, and working on my behalf. And we were able to be put in to a limited time travel promotion uh, on the shelves. That is incredible. It was pretty cool. It was definitely a surreal moment. And it was like, you know, even when you're looking, like there's still times where you expect it not to be there or it's at certain bookstores, but not others. And so like when I did finally find it and I was like, I'm going to go find it in another one just to make sure this wasn't like a fluke. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And, you know, it was just definitely, definitely really surreal. Right under Judy Bloom. Um, just oh, wow. Right eye level. Like you don't have, you have to reach to grab my book. It's like right there in the middle. Um, so great placement. And uh, yeah, I was just very happy. Awesome. Well, let's get into the nitty gritty of why people love you. The content that you have brought to people through all of your books has been so helpful for allowing people to take their travel dreams and make them a reality. As you know, we are points and miles girls. This podcast is all about helping to empower people to use their credit card rewards wisely to know how to get the most bang for their buck with travel and with points and miles. So tell us a little bit. So your book was 12 trips in 12 months. You actually, I think, went on like 20 trips and ended up being... Which of those trips were on points? What were some of the points deals you were able to get to make those trips possible? Yeah, so without points and miles, that year wouldn't have been possible. And one of the first things I did when I set out to do this challenge, as somebody who was not comfortable with credit cards, I come from a Puerto, I'm Puerto Rican, uh, and so my family just doesn't believe in debt. They think it's irresponsible. You know, they think it's living beyond your means. And because of that, I never had a healthy relationship with credit. So at like mm -hmm. 29, I had maybe one credit card. I'd had my whole life, so I had no credit history. That one credit card was from like Victoria's Secret for ninety dollars, and it went into collections because I moved so much, oh, goodness. you know, I didn't get the bill and I didn't understand how these things worked. And I was like a 20 year old in college. And so, um, that was the only like history that I had had with credit cards at that time. So this was a very scary thing to delve into. It was something that I didn't have a role model to look into. It's like somebody to teach mm -hmm. me how to do this. And so I did what I know how to do as a writer. And I went to the library and I just, you know, rented every single book I could about travel, travel hacking, travel tips. Uh, Scott Keyes was very important for me going into this, the founder of uh, Going, formerly Scott's Cheap Flights. And we connected actually that year because he was first starting out. That was like, what, six, seven years ago. So this was before he like super blew up mm -hmm. to the millions of people on the email list. But just his tips were really helpful for me. And taught me how I could become a travel hacker. So I started off with the JetBlue card um, because I think that's the best way for people to start off when you're scared because it's super clear. JetBlue has a low threshold um, and it's just like, you get these airline points, you redeem these airline points. You don't worry about transfer. You don't worry about bonuses. Like it's just so cut and dry and you see that immediate reward and then you're like, encouraged to, you know, take it in your Exactly, hooked. exactly. And so that's what I did with JetBlue. And my first uh, award redemption was for that $70 round trip flight to Aruba that I mentioned. Uh, it was because they were having some new routes. And so I was able to get that for the points. And that was just the cost of the points and of the fees round trip. Taxes. I think it was like 35 each way. Um, and so that was my first one. And then I also redeemed points and miles to go to Ecuador for $16 to fly back from Thailand for $80 to go to New Zealand for $38. Um, and so that's, you know, points and miles were pretty steadily how I was able to do a lot of those trips. It sounds like you only paid the taxes and fees. That's it, right? Fully covered on points, yes. but you just paid taxes and fees. Correct. I absolutely love that because that is not a recommendation that I have personally heard before, starting with the JetBlue card. And it actually makes a lot of sense because you see great JetBlue redemptions all the time. So I love that, especially, I think both Mary Ellen and I come from a very similar background. The way we were raised was like, no credit cards, no debt, that's not responsible. I was terrified of credit cards. I had then abused credit cards as a person who knew nothing about them. And then I had to dig myself fully out of debt in my 20s, which I did. But when I started learning about travel hacking points and miles, I was terrified. I was like, this sounds like a really bad idea because credit cards were just something that traumatized me. But you were 
you are so spot on with you have to start in like a small, easy, tangible way. And you have to make sure you're being wise, paying off those balances. But when you do that, the reward is so clear. I mean, you've demonstrated that time and time again. So that's really, really exciting to uh, hear how you use that to help get yourself through that challenge that you were doing. Was this a challenge created by somebody else? Or did you come up with this and challenge yourself to do it? I came up with it because I had always been so rigid with myself about not being able to celebrate your birthday beyond like the 24 hours that you're allocated, like midnight to midnight. Mm -hmm. And so I never had a week long, month long celebration. I always felt like I was kind of inconveniencing people with my parties and things like that. And so I never really celebrated my birthday in a fun way until I started doing activities for my birthday. So around 26, I decided Mm -hmm. like, oh, like, this is actually better than trying to have a party. If I like 26, I flew a plane for my birthday. Uh, so I woke up that oh, morning. I love it. Yeah. I just woke up. I got it's a so group cool. on. I was like, we're going to do this. And then I remember like, you know, as I'm flying over Fort Lauderdale and this plane where the guy's like, you know, do you want to take it for a loop D? And I'm like, no, I don't want to take it for a loop D. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. But thank you. Um, and then, yeah, landing and thinking like, even if, nobody comes to my party tonight. Like this will still be a very memorable birthday for me. I'll always remember this is the birthday I flew a plane. A plane. And so I realized, Absolutely. yeah, I realized that I could mark my birthdays in that way, in a way that was much less stressful, much more rewarding for me. Um, and so after that, I started traveling on my birthday. Like I spent my 28th in Barcelona and my, then my 29th was in Athens and it was there in Athens where I was wow. like, you know, this traveling for my birthday thing is really cool. And I'm about to be done my 20s. So I feel like I owe myself a kind of a super big birthday celebration because I haven't ever allowed myself to have one. And I'm not inconveniencing anybody else. Nobody else has come with me. But like, what if I do one birthday trip every month for myself? Like, just because I was, I'd worked so hard and I was stressed so much about like having it all and being single and having children and like being the perfect attorney. And like, I hadn't ever had like a carefree time in my 20s. So I thought I kind of owed it to myself to do something Mm -hmm. celebratory and fun and to take my mind off of the anxiety of this pending milestone and this like over the hill birthday now for women, you know, after 30 people start to ask you like, what's wrong with you? Why are you still single? All that stuff. Um, And so I was like, I don't want to worry about that. And I don't want to enter. I don't want to leave. I feel like I owe it to young Jen, like the youth of Jen that will never come back after this year. Like, yeah, I'm still young, but like my twenties are gone. They're, they're gone. And so that to me was the best way to send them out versus just sitting there and like being in a bit of a panic attack over what I hadn't achieved yet. How can I make the most of where I am currently? We cannot wait for you to hear the rest of today's episode. But before we dive back in, we want to invite you to connect with us on Instagram. If you're enjoying the insights and travel tips we share here on the podcast, here's how you can stay even more connected with us. First of all, follow us on our personal Instagram accounts for a glimpse into our daily lives and additional travel adventures. You can find Mary Ellen over at Family Travel for the Win with the number four, and you can find me, Joe, at Points to Wonderland. Give us a follow and reach out to say hello and let us know if you found us from the podcast. And of course, for all things podcast related, head over to our dedicated Instagram page at Wonderland on Points podcast to stay updated on upcoming episodes, behind the scenes moments, and maybe even some exclusive content. Plus, if you're a visual learner, check out our YouTube channel with the same name. We plan on launching full video episodes in the near future, and we would love for you all to join us over there. Your support on these platforms means the absolute world to us, and it's a fantastic way to be part of the growing Wonderland on Points community. So grab your phone, hit that follow button, and let's learn how to travel on points together. And now, back to the show. What I'm hearing from this is because I'm 39, so my 30s are about to be out the window, is that I need to tell my husband next year I get 12 trips. Yes. (laughs) I get 12 trips. We're going out strong. I do plan to go out strong with some travel. I'll tell you that right now. Yes. What about instead of just points and miles, another specialty of yours and one of the things that you really dug into when you were doing all your trip planning was mistake fares. Mm -hmm capitalizing on airline mistake fares. Mm -hmm. Tell us some of the ways you find mistake fares. What are some of the tools that people can use to also find them? 
Yeah. Well, there are so many companies now that their sole goal is to monetize off mistake fare. So Scott's Cheap Flights mm. now going was one of them. And then so many other people popped up and emulated that model and built on it and expanded on it. So now you have, you have originally mistakes fares are somebody has a fat thumb, somebody enters, enters it wrong. And suddenly that $1,400 flight is $400. And if you catch it before that human error is fixed, there's a chance it can be honored if you book it through the airline, you know, things like that. And if it's not, then you just get your money back. You don't have to pay the difference if you don't want to. So you don't lose anything so long as you're not booking any other non-refundable reservations until you get that confirmed. So it's a really great way to find deals. And so uh, going is one of them. Thrifty Traveler is another. Uh, Max Flights is another one. There's Dollar Flight Club. I mean, we mentioned our mutual friend, Ashley. She has Ashley Gets Around. She has her list for business class fares specifically. Uh, the Rome newsletter, R-O-A-M-E, they have, uh, you know, particularly for points deals and things like mm -hmm. that. And so I think that these are just models where they've made it their business to have people who are looking for the deals for you. And then you're paying for the convenience of having them sent to you when they pop up. So you can just click a button and book. And honestly, it's really little for what you're paying. Like, um, some of these are like $50 a year subscriptions, which you save so much more than that. Like, the alerts I get on average are like $400 round trip flights to Europe kind of thing, you know, um, $600 round trip flights to Japan, really good flight, like mistake fares that I've seen that are for the premium list that maybe you're paying like $100 a year. I've seen like a $70 round or flight to Japan from Pittsburgh, not round trip, but one. Wow. Hour. Yeah. So that's incredible. They come up and I personally, I've flown to Argentina for 300 round trip. You know, I've taken advantage of them wherever possible. So I think that they help to just be in the know. And I think just pick one you like. And if you don't want to pay right away, sign up for the, that's why I like going because they have like a freemium model where you can join their free list and just get a portion of the deals. But you can also follow them on social media because a lot of them are promoting these deals because they want you to mm -hmm. join the list. So if you're following them on social media, you can see what they're posting. Absolutely. That is such a good idea. And uh, there, I know there's a lot of good ones out there. It's so hard to know what to choose and what to try out, but it's a good idea to try maybe a free trial for each of them and see what you like and see if they're sending things that speak to you. Mm -hmm. So of all of the places you've been, and you've been a lot of places, we would love for you to tell our listeners some of your favorites, or maybe even if you just want to pick like a top one or two and give us a pitch for why everyone should go to this place. That's what we want to hear. Yeah, well, I have so many really cool things I've done recently. I probably should talk about the ones in the book. Um, but some of the more recent ones that are like fresh in my memory, because I've been going through the camera and making content and things like that. Uh, staying at Giraffe Manor in Kenya is a once in a lifetime experience. Uh, oh my you know, one of the only places in the world where you can feed giraffes from your window. Uh, it's a giraffe conservation. So you're really learning a lot about them. You're having dinner with them. They're just everywhere. And it's incredible. Oh my gosh. Um, it's pretty surreal. And I highly recommend. Um, I do enjoy Japan, uh, Tokyo specifically. I enjoy the fun things you can do there. What I like about Japan is that you can kind of let your inner child play and nobody judges you. People wear cute things yes. and like nobody cares. You're not lame, like, you know. Um, and so I went there to get the big, the cotton candy that was bigger than my head. Uh, yes. <laughs> Love highly it. recommend. Uh, but like be prepared because it's a lot and you have to eat it because there's no trash can. So like you're going in <laughs> for the cotton candy. Like. <laughs> And so oh my gosh. You are all yeah, in yeah. at that You're point. You're committed. I did it, but it was not easy. I mean, the things I do for my work. Um, and then <laughs> <laughs> if somebody's got to eat the cotton candy, I'll eat the cotton it's candy. You know. Um, <laughs> and then um, also, I did there a kintsugi class. So if you've ever done uh, heard about that Japanese art form, it's a class that um, takes broken ceramic pieces and the brand oh, rises yes. the break the and fills it in with gold lacquer to emphasize that broken things are more beautiful because they're broken and they have that story to tell. Mm. And that's where the gold shines in is through the cracks. So it's meant to be a metaphor for you as a person. And I do think it's a really healing, wonderful local art experience. Just all the things I love uh, working with your hands, you know, supporting a local artist, like really having a meaningful cultural experience. So 
I and I go and then you know continuing on my fun frivolous, I uh, also went go karting there in a onesie down the streets of Shinjuku. Highly recommend. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> what was your onesie? Um, was it a character? Yes, I picked Hello Kitty. Um, I oh yeah, I did initially. I was hoping for Princess Peach because I think they were ri- originally called called Mario Kart, but infringement made them be called Monkey Kart, and so now they can't do. <laughs> Mario Brothers costume. So I couldn't do Princess Peach. Um, and so Bad. I had to do, yeah, I had to do Hello Kitty, but that's okay. Hello Kitty worked for me. Uh- <laughs> yes, that's awesome. And just a little side note for the listeners, Japan, Tokyo specifically, is a pretty easy place to get to on points and miles. Lots of flight options on points and lots of great hotels on points. Really good Hyatt's there. We have a couple episodes mentioning um, Japan, specifically the one with Raimi, who I don't know if you know Raimi. She was also at Wits. She spoke there. Um, So I'm going to link that in the show notes for you guys because this just made me want to go to Japan so bad. Like These are all things that no one has mentioned to us of things that you can do there and it sounds amazing and i'm just scratching the surface (laughs) my My head is exploding (laughs) other than the cotton candy in tokyo which destination had the most memorable food your favorite food throughout the world that you have enjoyed uh, you know, Qatar had a lot, Doha had a lot of really wonderful restaurants, world-class, beautiful desserts, like chefs from Italy making the pizza by hand. Like it's such an international city um, that I really appreciated how many delicious things we had, no matter what genre of food we were eating. Um, so I was really impressed by that super fresh pomegranate juice, giant prawns, like just really delicious fresh mm-hmm. things there that I felt really good about eating there. Um, where else do I really like the food? I do like the food generally in the, in all over the middle East, like shawarma is kind of my thing. I'm obsessed with it. It's like my lunch mm-hmm. wherever I can find it. Um, I just came back from Eastern Europe where I had, you know, a chimney cake from Hungary, which was delicious. And they don't make desserts as fancy as they do. at like Hungary, uh, Austria, these like where you're just eating this decadent trifle in a big, you know, in a castle setting and everything's so opulent and ornate and you just like, oh, Mozart dined here or like Einstein used to come here for yeah. a coffee. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed it there as well. I mean, honestly, I can find food literally everywhere I go. Um, even where I grew up, I grew up in Philadelphia and I think the best ice cream in the world in the world is actually in Amish country, Pennsylvania. Um, yes, because they make everything by hand. They are like milking the cow that morning, hand churning your ice cream and you taste it. It is so creamy. It is so delicious. It is so fresh. Um, yeah. So I think you don't have to go super far and I think you can find food anywhere. Um, I certainly do. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. This might be a little bit of a derailment, but it's fresh in my mind because of something that I saw on Instagram recently. And that is people's experience is that going overseas, going to Europe, or even Amish country, Pennsylvania, you're eating a lot of the same foods, mm-hmm. but you don't feel the same after you eat mm-hmm. them. You were mentioning like the decadent things in Hungary and Austria. Do you find that when you're eating foods overseas, you're feeling better? Because there's just like so many chemicals and additives and everything that are allowed here that aren't allowed over there. And I don't know why that's like on my mind right now. That's totally not what we're talking about. I'm just curious. Absolutely. I think that's really pertinent and something that we do see a lot. Like I came back from Spain, uh, where I was at Tebex and I was speaking there and Basque country. And we did so many food tours on our trips and everybody, all the Americans, we at this at the end of it, we were just like leaving the bread behind. We were like, don't give us any more bread because we're not used to eating that much bread. But for them, bread is not the enemy. Bread does not make you fat. Bread does not give you like gluten problems. Bread does not agitate you. They eat bread like normal. They're not afraid of it. And I think that that's because it doesn't affect them in a similar way that it does here. We do have a lot of, uh, you know, chemicals that are used, not just in our plants and not just in like engineering them to grow more and pesticides and things like that, but the antibiotics and the chickens and the uh, meats that we eat, the farm, you know, fish. I try to have Mm -hmm. 
wild caught fish whenever possible. Cause I know that being in a setting of just like hundreds of you in a really enclosed setting is going to have a stressed meat. And that's going to be like stressed meat that I'm eating and putting in my body of like an animal that was just under Amen. distress from beginning to yes. end. Um, and so, and it's hard, it's hard to find that. And I, I'm one person. So I end up spending a lot of money for food. Um, And, you know, I travel. So it's tough for me to keep like a big stock of things as well. Um, So it is challenging. Feeding myself is actually one of the most challenging things. And I'm at the age where I'm seeing it directly impact my health. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I mean, we never talk about this on the podcast, really, but I really nerd out about ingredients and just the the differences in food and the choices that you have that you are in control of, but also that come with a high, high price tag sometimes, which can be really, really challenging for the average everyday working person. So thank you for sharing a little bit about that, even though that is totally not anywhere on the questions that we told you we were going to be asking. <laughs> it's okay. It's just... <laughs> following the rabbit trail where it leads us. But I'll try to bring us back to this a little bit. So your 12 trips in 12 months were a few years ago, but now you're doing this full time. So, and you mentioned you've just gotten back from from some traveling. So what does traveling look like for you now? How often are you traveling? How far in advance do you plan your trips? Are you just like, oh, good flight deal. I'm going tomorrow. Tell us what your life kind of the structure is right now. Yeah. Well, my life has been a little bit crazy these last couple of months because of the book tour. So this has been Mm. a schedule that's way different than what I would normally keep. And I honestly have not been home since April. I had 19 stops, 24 book uh, TV appearances around the country. So I've just been, wow. And four press trips in between that. So I've been like hopping from one thing to another. You've been a busy lady. It's been wild. And so I actually feel super burnt out. So whenever anybody's like, you know, um, travel is just great to do more travel. Like uh, for me, I get my rest when I'm home. Like my vacation is being mm-hmm. home. My vacation is not having anything to do, not having anything on the schedule and having time to recoup. And after what has been four months of just nonstop traveling, really intense, because it's like two in the morning at the airport, five o'clock, you're at the flight, like, you know, 8 a.m. you land by noon, I'm on TV by 6 p.m. I'm doing an appearance. And then like, I'm leaving and flying out to the next city for the next day. Like, it's intense. And wow. like, I really got irritable. I got to the point where I'm like, I don't want to be around people. I definitely don't want to be in airport settings. Like my goal at this point is to like not talk to anybody on an airplane because yeah. it never goes well when you start talking. Like, <laughs> And so like the only way I can avoid altercations is just to sleep through it and to just like put on my mask, put on my headphones and like put on my hoodie, like look like an alien and hope no one talks to me. Um, and that's how I survived, you know, now the crazy amounts of flights that I've done this year. But um, normally, when I'm not on this insane schedule, um, I travel for work. And so I'm traveling Mm -hmm. about two times a month or so, usually on three to four day press trips. And then if I'm speaking at a conference, I might be traveling next uh, month, I'm going to be going to LA for an award ceremony because my book won an international Latino book award. Um, And so amazing. Yeah. So sometimes things like that pop up and I, I go somewhere, but it's really I've Because it's my job, because I enjoy being home, because I make more money when I am home being productive than when I'm out there gathering content. Like I've lost Mm. followers this summer because I haven't been able to keep up that steady posting schedule. And I feel like I gain the most traction on my own business when I can be home to work on it. So if I'm going to take time away from that, it should be for something that's going to be paying me money, not costing me more money. That makes right. a lot of sense. That makes a Especially lot of sense. Especially if it's not just for pleasure trips. Nothing is it, pleasure. It's all work-related. Yeah, it's all work-related <laughs> travel. So what is, when you're home now, well, hopefully you'll be home some yes. soon. What are you working on? Are you writing another travel book? Yes. So now that I am home, I really do have time to just process and crank out. I have at least a hundred different video concepts that I have brainstormed, short form and long form that I have to start cranking out. I have uh, blog posts and I'm redoing my site, you know, with all the Google algorithm updates, everybody's site is tanked. My site is monetized through Mediavine and I really want to put more time and care into it. So I also have a backlist of articles that I'm working on to get up there, hopefully interlinking with YouTube videos to like double the SEO Mm -hmm. juice. 
Um, I'm, oh, yeah. I am working on the next book proposal. So I am also simultaneously writing the next book, which I have it very clear in my mind. And I just have to finish these sample chapters. My agent wanted it like two months ago. And I'm like, I am doing my best. And I have no juice. <laughs> So I'm trying to get that finished now. Um, I'm getting back into the gym, healthy eating, healthy cooking, you know, really getting all my doctor's appointments and things worked on. So a lot of personal and professional goals that I'm tackling from all ends. I am so grateful that you're even here right now because that that exhausted me to listen to. So thank you for giving us your time because you are maxed out, it sounds like. And we're really <laughs> grateful that you are willing to come share a little bit of your day with us. Absolutely. I'm so impressed by you. And also it makes me feel completely unproductive. Like Mary Ellen, what have I done with my life? No. Nothing. <laughs> I've done nothing. Please. You're doing so much. No, please, please. I feel the same way. Like I had yesterday where I had so many things I wanted to do and I was like, I didn't even cross the bare minimum off my list. I've just laid here for quite a bit today. Um, so I think you sometimes know you need, yeah, to give yourself You got to listen grace. to your body. Listen to your body. Give yourself grace. I love that phrase so much. Well, Let's start wrapping it up so we don't keep you here any longer than we have to and maybe leave our listeners with a few practical travel tips, like things that maybe you learned the hard way that didn't go right, mistakes that they can avoid, or just like really good basic 101 tips to help people have the best travel experience they can. Yeah, I think when you're going somewhere, especially if you're new to this, research is your friend. I know everybody thinks spontaneity is sexy. It is not. It is not sexy when you've paid a lot of money to go somewhere and now it's closed because you didn't realize they have reduced winter hours and they close at three instead of five and you didn't get to see Mm. this amazing landmark or that the tickets to go up to like this particular viewpoint have sold out because you didn't make reservations. Like you don't Mm. want that and you don't want to spend your trip waiting in line. Like imagine if you could just walk past everybody in line and go straight to what you want to see instead of spending an hour in your line. Like how is that enjoyable? So please, I beg, uh, do some research because it will make your trip that much more enjoyable. And as a solo female traveler, I think that there's, you know, knowledge is power. So if you know you have your street view and you see what does it look like around your hotel? How do I get from the airport to the hotel safely? What are my transportation Mm. options? What are some common scams I should be on the lookout for or neighborhoods I should avoid? Mm. This is just good stuff to know so that you can navigate easier. And then once you have that and you start to travel more, more often, you'll be able to go without doing as much research because you'll feel more confident in your own abilities. But that starts with having your first trip go successfully and not you sitting there being like, oh, this was a disaster, you know? And so I think that's the way to do it. Absolutely. That's an incredible tip. I'm going to urge everybody to go over to your Instagram because there are some fascinating locations and videos. It's so fun to just kind of scroll your feed and be like, oh my gosh, it's Dracula's castle. Oh my (laughs) gosh, it's a Harry Potter themed restaurant. As I'm like sitting here eating ramen noodles out of my Harry Potter ramen noodle cup that I got at five below. Um, (laughs) It's an incredible account, and we would also like you to tell everybody where they can find you in all of the places, where they can find your book as well. So you can find me at Jen on a jet plane, like leaving on a jet plane, Jen with one N, uh, Jen on a jet plane.com, and under that handle on TikTok, Instagram, Threads, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, all the things, YouTube. All the places. Um, and then also, if you enjoy what we talked about here today, you can go to 12 trips in 12 monthscom And there I have a free webinar that shares some practical travel tips. And I have a bonus at the end of the webinar where you can get any one of my self-published books that I mentioned, a digital copy that I will send you for free to help kickstart your own travel challenge. That's awesome. incredible. Jen, thank you so much. We didn't mention this from the top, but I did want to connect with you that my family is also Puerto Ooh. Rican. Not my family, my husband husband's family, my kids, I call them my little Puerto Ricans because they are one fourth Puerto Rican. And one of our recent trips over the last year, we went to Puerto Rico so that they could experience the Puerto Rican culture for the first time since that's such a big part of their heritage. So I wanted to connect with you on that before we let you go. But 
Thank you so much. Is there anybody else? You have mentioned a couple apps and resources. We like to ask our guests just for fun. Are there any just travel creators, not necessarily anybody big, but somebody fun, somebody funny, somebody you enjoy following that shares travel content on the internet? So many people. Uh, and so I, I feel bad that you're just popping off randomly because I feel like random people come to mind. But uh, Alex from Alex on the Map, she's always hiking. Uh, and I think it's really fun to see her explore these like beautiful nature places. And she shares a lot of really great tips too for anybody interested in working in these settings as well. Um, mm. I think about Alexa Moore, a uh, little Miss Awkward. She's amazing. And she always shares some really great destinations as well. Um, food travelist, uh, Sue and D Diane, uh, Sue and Diane Riddell. Um, they are amazing and they share, they live in Portugal. And so they have a book on how to move abroad to Portugal for anybody actually looking to move overseas. Wow. Um, so I just, I had I mean, I have a community of like hundreds of people and I feel really bad just like sporadically pe picking people from the ethers here, but, um, cause there's so many worthwhile creators. Uh, and I wish I could, you know, list them all more coherently, but those are just some that come to mind. <laughs> We're going to link all three of those in the show notes so that everybody can find them. We're going to link all of your offerings in the show notes so people can go take advantage of these things and get your free digital book and all of the things. We are so, so grateful that you shared your time with us today. And congratulations on mm -hmm. your big award. Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited to receive it. Let's see which uh, place it is because we don't know yet if it's gold, silver, bronze honorable mention Ooh, but we just know oh, the one okay. one. rooting for you. you yeah you rooting find for you. that out at the actual moment yeah oh that's so intense and so <laughs> exciting well we're putting out all the gold vibes for you thank you so much we appreciate you and everyone we'll see you here next time Thank you, ladies. If you enjoyed this show today, please consider writing us a review or clicking five stars wherever you listen to your podcasts. And please subscribe and follow along so that you never miss an episode. You can follow the podcast on Instagram or YouTube at Wonderland on Points Podcast. You can find me on Instagram at Family Travel for the Win with the number four. And you can find me on Instagram at Points to Wonderland. If you're thinking about getting a new Travel Rewards credit card, consider using the links in our show notes. Using our links helps to support us and keep our podcast going so we can provide you with all the latest tips and tricks when it comes to traveling on points. And if you aren't sure which card is right for you, shoot us an email at wonderlandonpoints at gmail.com and we would be happy to walk you through a free card consultation. That's also a great place to send us all of your comments and questions. Thank you so much for joining us and we will see you here next time.